All right, well, let's find out what happens in number two on Ohana. Yes, sir. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the game as we also want to say, guys, while you're watching, you can go ahead and check out the beta at beyondgaming.com. Oh, yeah. The be Beyond Gaming is a tournament platform where we're hosting this qualifier as well as a lot of other cool stuff. And kind of the neat thing about Beyond Gaming is that they're not just StarCraft 2. They're hosting all kinds of tournaments for all kinds of games like yeah. FIFA, League of Legends, all these kinds of tournaments. And they want to connect users to each other. So say you just want to compete in the games that you love. Yeah. So go ahead and hop on over to beta.beyondgaming.com where they're launching version 3 where you can win up to $5,000 in prizes in cash. And not only that, it's like you're connecting the user base to the tournaments, you know? Yes. You're able to follow the tournaments a lot easier. You're able to actually participate in the tournaments a lot easier. And that's something very powerful. Definitely check that out. Again, beta.beyondgaming.com. But for now, we have gimmicks versus sleep. Gimmicks in the top left-hand corner as the green Terran. Bottom right-hand corner, we have, of course, sleep as our red Terran. He's going to go... Red Zerg. Wow. And he's going to go ahead and 13 scout. This is very important. On, on Ohana, just like Cloud Kingdom, two Raxes are very powerful. Very, very powerful. So you want to go ahead yes. and make sure there are no proxies. And once you verify yeah. that, then you put down your 15 hatch. And like, oh, ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Yes, and doing it in game two traditionally is a very strong position to do. I know Alive likes doing it, but then again, Alive likes to two racks in games number one and three as well and, and not necessarily no not necessarily he will do it three games in a row but he'll he'll he doesn't have like a track record of saying oh in game number two i'll only two racks and i think two racks is a very powerful build but at the same time i think just the casual expand as well is good on ohana uh, ohana is a map that I, I feel is actually pretty good for terran given the push distances and the ability that you can kind of really funnel things down a certain path. I know a lot of people said there's a counterattack path, but I'm starting to realize more and more you can control space really well as Terran on this map against Zerg, especially when Zerg tries to search for that fourth base and you can set up a lot of timings based off of it. Yeah, I think most of it comes down to the fact that it's very hard for Zerg to actually position to get ready for a counterattack because if you saw, see, like, okay, for example, if I prepare all my Zerg wings and roaches over here, well... All of a sudden, it's like the Terran needs to actually go to the left lane for me to actually have a counterattack path. Mm -hmm. But if they go to the right, it's like, whoa, crap. Well, I have to reposition my units. Are you really going to make this entire attack? I mean, that's a lot of space to actually traverse to actually go into the bottom left-hand corner, yeah. wherever it might be. So, oh, well, I reverse the positions. But it's still that same theory. It's like you ha it's hard for Zergs to really catch the push coming until it's you know at a point where it's too late. Yeah. You have to kind of be lucky with the counterattacks. It's a little bit tricky in that regard, but we'll see if that even gets that far. Sleep has been playing really well yesterday, but then today his ZVT has looked exactly backwards. But of course, that was just one game, and it's the best of three. Anything can happen. It's a new day, Andre. Yes, sir. New opportunities. Gimmicks now going for another factory expand, or reactor Hellion expand. Last time, he also went for a second factory, and the way he's giving up his gas might directly go for that. But of course, you can also just switch directly into Banshees. But no, instead, it's going to be double factory once again. Now, the problem with double factory, because first of all, it's a really solid way to control space early on, but it's, it's also the case that you kind of have to gamble on the fact that Zerg's not prepared for the Hellions early on, because if they shut it down, Andre, that's a lot of minerals you invested, and it really hurts your ability to do a mid-game push unless you want to surround your timings around Hellions. That's exactly right. I mean, yes, there are double factory timings directly after that where you get a lot of tanks, but once Zerg's realize, hey, you're kind of relegated to that, tanks are very slow, yeah. they say, okay, well, I have like a good two minutes, three minutes until you can formulate any form of push, because if you push out, with three tanks, and you went uh, invested, uh, of course, all those Hellions at the beginning, and then after that, used two factories to only make three tanks. That's like so minimal, right? Yeah. It's the most inefficient build ever. Like you've spent so much that uh, your push really has no substance to it. So that being said, I mean, Zergs understand that, and they just say, "Okay, let me sit back, let me go ahead and do whatever I want." Yeah. I mean, a minute passes, more creep, more Zerglings, more queens, more like just everything. So. Drones. It just gives Zerg ability to control space that much more, and with each creep tumor means tanks push that much slower, that's and that's right. going to be really tough. But look at this! Gimmick's going to mix it up and go Marauder Hellion. Oh. Wow. Okay. Interesting. 
Interesting. This is kind of a variation of Pulse build that he likes doing. He does do it off one gas as well, so this is kind of cool. Anyway, um, we're in a position where, you know, Sleep has to protect against this all-in, of course. And he's yet again going up to four gas and a lair. This is really weird, Froden. Four gas and a lair. So, we, yeah, he's going for a quick lair again, but he has to also deal yeah. with these Hellions that are running by Sleep. Can't get too careless with his drones. Now he has running it, but they're trying to also funnel directly into the natural. And now he's starting to split. That's what he needed last game, but he's still taking pretty significant losses and sleep. Man, let's see how many workers he lost. He lost eight. But still, his drone count is considerably low, considering he's going again for a two base spire. Yeah, two base spire. Hmm. Was this the build he was doing yesterday? I feel like it wasn't. No, he didn't. Uh, no, he definitely didn't do this yesterday. Because he was up against, like, natural. Expansions. Oh, okay, I'm going to be critical on sleep. This overlord actually should have been over here. And that would have been able to actually get in here, see a command center being popped down, and then he's in a position where he can actually take his third hatchery and play a standard game uh, according to you know the current metagame. Yeah. I really feel like sleep blundered this, and he's putting himself in a position where his build is just super inefficient. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough because, yeah, you're, you're right. Sleep scouted a very delayed command center, not able to spot his opponent. And as a result, Gimmicks has been able to just get farther and farther ahead, and Sleep now finally injecting more drones into his economy. Uh, but he's just not looking very sharp. He doesn't have to seem to have that overwhelming number of units. And now Gimmicks is adding a third factory and kind of abstaining away from Marauders. Uh, I guess he just queued up that early Marauder so that he can have safety early on, which is really nice. But... Now Gimmick's going to go for his uh, engineering bay and armory upgrade simultaneously, just like he did in game number one, and then probably switch directly back into Thor's. I, I want, uh, does Gimmick's know about that, that Spire? Did he manage to catch a peek of it? I don't think so. No, he did. So he doesn't know. But something has to be suspicious when you see the oh layer yeah. that fast. And I think a better choice would have been Infestor tech from here. I mean, I, th I always think Infestors are the best way to go. I think Infestors are really good as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, ma the majority of viewers are like, yeah, Andre, Infestors are good. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> this just in. Broodlords are good against oh Thor. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please make something. Hellions are going to smash face. Oh, wow. And the gate has been opened and sleep has all these drones exposed and he's fighting oh. with some of the drones. And that is exactly what the Hellions saying. Yes, please, by all means, come. Come check out my awesome car. Oh my god. And uh, god. these drones are just going to completely get annihilated. Doesn't matter what happened. And this is the beautiful thing. The beautiful thing is this gives gimmicks time as well. The fact that he's keeping the Hellions alive. Meteors have to fall back to deal with the Hellions. Now gimmicks can prepare everything. He's getting his turrets in production. The Thor is in a good position as well. And just like that, you shut down the Meteors, and all of a sudden, a huge gas investment, 700 gas, has been committed to these Meteors that are not going to give them that much return. And Gimmicks, again, doing the same type of build that we saw last game. I mean, he is at three factories, and he's able to actually pump out a lot of Blue Flame Hellions, but this is, like, perfect. Like, Thor, Blue Flame Oof. Hellion, counters Muta, Zergling, Baneling so much, and then you add in the Marine Marauder at a time where a lot of Zergs are actually switching over because they realize, oh, you're actually going bio, and their Roaches and their Banelings are heavily underdeveloped. And you just hit this amazing timing where it's like, oh, well. This oh, is well, awesome. yeah, this, <laughs> this I is have awesome. any, everything I uh, could ever imagine. Uh, I have a gigantic lead on you in every single facet of this game. Yeah, he's got a good production <laughs> advantage. He's got, uh, I mean, he's got good upgrades as well because he did start that plus one, plus one a lot earlier. And the Thors with plus one, just they scale so well, especially when you're going for Mutas. Uh, it just it just adds phenomenal amount of DPS. Now, Gimmicks doesn't have that third command center established just yet, but he's going to have it at a pretty decent time. It's going to be one minute, though, after that Overlord dies. Fun fact, if an Overlord is dropping creep at an expansion, it takes one minute for the creep to clear up. I hate you, Overlords, that do that. <laughs> I hate you people it's, that it's do just, that. It's just Actually, so but you're a Zerg player. Now like, I do that, bro. As if that matters. <laughs> Imagine if Creep like, blocked you from being able to take an expansion. That'd be that'd be absurd. That'd, that'd be, be so like you funny. can't land a command center because of a Zerg thing. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Frodan, I see what you did there. Oh. 
L O L. Hey, let's, let's CVT after this. We should, I guess. Oh, well, <laughs> if you really feel like getting a self esteem boost. Oh, look at this. Gimmick's gonna run by again. More drones for the pickings. And uh, I guess this time the Munos are in position to really deal with it. Gimmicks is not able to do too much damage, but again, keeping the drone count in check compared to his worker count, Andre, is very nice right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, as we can see, let's look at the income tab. 70 harvesters to 58 with three extra mules every single time. That is beautiful. Beautiful. With an extra Buddha. Extra <laughs> extra Buddha. I thought you were talking beautiful, like, uh, like is in booty for. Oh. Uh, you can see that Sleep at this point <laughs> does not really have anything really going on for him. No booty, no nothing. Oh, denying stim though. Oh, that whoa, Gimmicks doesn't have stim. No, he does not. Huh. And he does lose a significant amount of time getting it because yeah. he doesn't have a tech lab on a barracks. Unfortunately, Sleep has no indication to know that that was stim. And on top of that, he would never yeah. think to imagine that was Stim. Well, 15 <laughs> minutes into the game, it's like, oh, my opponent has no Stim. He has four Thors. He has, he has four no Thors, th right. I mean, ultimately, it's going to come down to whether or not Sleep can even hold a push if Gimmick chooses to move out. Because the, the crux of the army isn't the Marines. It's it's the, the tanks and the Thors that add so much damage and really keeps the Banes at bay and the Mule is from being able to ever dive the units. Yes, sir. Gimmicks will now have plus two weapons for both of his infantry and his mechanized units finished before Stim does. This is such an interesting build from Gimmicks. Oh and I just, I, I'm actually really curious because this is kind of cool the way his style is really geared against Sleep. And Sleep has not really been able to optimize his economy. Normally Sleep's the guy. Yesterday we saw him go up to like 100 drones, right? He's been playing down in drones this entire game. Yes, yes. And he's continued going muta production. Frodan, no me gusta. No me gusta. Uh, uh, you don't, so you're saying you don't like the mutas. I do not like mutas. Well, I don't like mutas in this matchup. agree with this idea of counterattack to pull back the units? I there do. are a lot of mutas. Uh, and look at this. Sleep actually mounting another attack at the third base, and it's completely open. Ah, this Gimmicks. is more like what Sleep likes to do, just constantly poking back and forth. This is what he was doing yesterday against Reza. Uh, on the last episode of the NSQ, and he was able to really force Terran back. But you know what? Gimmick says, well, screw that. I'm just going to go straight for your production line. Oh, no. But and he's, he's not in not position. Ready. Andre, the Marines don't have Stim here. They can't run back. But oh, guess what? Thor's are really good <laughs> at absorbing Baneling. Oh, oh man. Wow. <laughs> oh, Sleep is so sad oh, right but now. Sleep is now pulling the Mutas. And guess what? These Thor's are actually pretty weak. One yeah, of them is are. just almost going to get oh. insta give. And the Thors are going to get surrounded by the Zerglings as well. A phenomenal engagement for Sleep. And Gimmicks will lose a huge part of his army, which takes so long to replace. He does have Marines and Tanks uh, posted up at his third. But regardless, that's a lot of damage that Gimmicks took. Oh, yes, it is. I mean, the the trade in the army is actually super expensive. I actually want to look at that unit's loss tab right now. Yeah, you can see Gimmicks has lost more than his opponent. It's only by a, about 1,000, but... That shouldn't be the case with how we had the early game. There yeah. were a ton of workers killed at the early game stage. And the income, as you can see, 67 to 62 with a slight advantage of sleep. Of course, mules give Terran that slight advantage, but still not protecting his main base. These mutas somehow are doing so much damage. Yeah. They really should not be. And he doesn't have any more Thors. He's got pure Marines. And Gimmicks once again losing his production line and saying, I'm just going to go ahead and try to protect it with whatever units I got, but I'm going to also attack this fourth base. Sleep, of course, really has to start thinking about establishing that fourth base because you want those gases. You invested so much in Amuse, your, your layer tech to defend, your hive tech is kind of weak, but he also has to worry about these banelings. These Marines are off creep, but the siege tanks are now in position. In fact, they're fighting unseized, and now he's going to get all of his units trapped, and Gimmicks loses a huge amount of his secondary force. No. Gimmicks wow. can't be trading like that. Uh. Whenever you're up against some sort of Muta, Zerking, Bane army, you don't actually do these small little attacks. You do these massive big attacks. Oh, his Marines are in position yet again. He's going to get caught, and the Muta now can focus onto the tanks. And uh, the Banelings, they're off creep, but they are scaring the, the Marines back. But nonetheless, Sleep does end up backing off, realizing he would like to at least have that creep available to him. Now, one thing Gimmicks has been doing a pretty good job of, at least, is... Uh, being able to get his expansion timings down. His third base was timed nicely. His fourth base was timed as well. But still, man, you, just like you said, you can't keep trading like that, especially as now it enters a stage where Sleep is going to prepare Hive Tech, and you lose that army once again, that's going to be it. Exactly, and you know, there should be a 200-200 push right now that comes to that kind of dissuades 
uh, any Zerk from actually doing this Hive Tech transition. And oh my god, he's going to lose his fourth base to Froden. Mm. No, deny it. Uh, he's uh. going to try to save it, but of course, he's not going to lose a single Muta doing that as well. Great job. And Gimmicks immediately starts a fourth base yet again. Nope. And That's so unfortunate. This is tough because now that bot sleep enough time yeah. for everything. I mean, he's, he has 11 Festers popping. That is plenty of time because now he's going to be able to uh, not only get his Hive Tech out, but rack up energy counts. He's going to be able to stall pushes from Gimmicks significantly. Gimmicks, of course, has a very strong production line. Don't get me wrong. He's got an, a lot of barracks. He's got triple factory. So he should be able to get out units still. But regardless, it's just that Sleep has bought enough time to that. Now, I don't think Gimmicks can make this push work. No. If he doesn't win here, he's dead. 100%. You can see on the production tab, there's no 3-2 on the way. His upgrades are at 2-1. His yeah. opponent is going up to 3-3. Three, three. So that means if he doesn't win here, he has no late game potential. Like, it's yeah. going to be significantly oh. weakened. Ouch. That's going to weaken this army up quite substantially as yeah. well. And look at his Mutas from the back actually taking out some siege tanks. Nicely done. It really segments a lot of units. Zergling's coming from oh. behind as well. Oh my god, the big flank has started. And also an attack from the front. The siege tanks are going to completely swarm. And this is pretty much a highlight reel for ZVT because you're able to see sleep coming from every single direction, from the rear, from the front, as well as being able to lash down the army with fungals. Great engagement from sleep. And that's what I was talking about. Sleep is really good at these kinds of engagements. And it was really funny, too, because his banings were on hold position, and he was baiting gimmicks to move forward until his infestors latched down the army oh from the front. Gosh. And now gimmicks... The, the fourth base is so close to the creep that Sleep can constantly poke him back and forth. Ultralists are now popping. Upgrades are finishing. Hive Tech is comfortably being secured. And Greater Spire is done. Andre, this is looking like lights out for our turn player in just a couple of minutes. As soon as Sleep can gather himself, what can Gimmicks really do? He's, he's on Marine Tank still with mid-game upgrades and no vision for the late-game transition. Yeah. We're going to be seeing a GG coming out pretty soon. I mean, Gimmicks is really in an unwinnable situation. He hasn't invested anything into this end game. And as you said, Marine Tank, not the best thing to deal with Hive Tech units. Uh, you're going to see Marines deal, what is that, <laughs> probably three damage every single time to an Ultralisk? It's not going <laughs> to be enough. Yeah. Three damage? Well, one thing, once they get their chitness upgrades. Yeah. Uh, actually, it'll do uh, two damage. Is it two? Oh, it yeah, because be, be the, they're only plus two attack. Yeah. That's right. Oh. So Marines will be two, doing two damage per oh. shot against an Ultralisk. And uh, by my calculations, three is more than shots. two. <laughs> Why did it take me so long to divide 500 by two, Andre? My 250. My goodness. That's right. <laughs> you can see Sleep doing a good job again, harassing on both fronts of the third and the fourth while picking off mules, targeting them down. And that's kind of the beauty of Ohana in the northeast. You have lots of dead airspace for these mutas to be able to constantly buy time. Gimmick's already sensing some kind of late game, but unfortunately for him, it's not going to be Blue Lords. It's, uh, it's, it's Ultralist. Ouch. And he's making Vikings, and now he can't really handle this entire army getting fungled. Bailing's rolling to the mineral line. Gimmicks completely latched down. And while, yes, he has good positioning, he doesn't have enough units to really handle the onslaught. The Ultras are forced back, but this fourth base represented so much of his economy. He has no mining whatsoever. It's, it's literally zero. Yeah, Fred, and look at that third base, man. TT. Not good. Muta's still doing stuff 26 minutes into the game. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> what? Wow, it's been so cost efficient. Each of these mutas have seven to ten kills apiece. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. Look, click on them. Sweet well, not three, ball. but three. Oh, but not still. that one either. Seven, ten. Oh, my God. Seven and ten. <laughs> another <laughs> yes. And another one has All eight. of them have at least <laughs> seven or ten. I clicked on another one. It said eight, and another one said said six, so wow, I was estimating, man. Dude, you got I got the wrong sample set. I'm, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> How sick is that? That's that's stats 101 right there, man. Your yeah. sample set. That's actually true, though. In cannot my conclude class, enough. If you're not careful, Professor will check your sample size. So quick little tip for anyone trying to enter stats 101 and think they can get away with false sampling. <laughs> but uh, you can see that sleep. He's got full map control. Now extended creep both sides of the map. And Gimmicks can't even land his command center because one Burrow Zergling is in the way. Yeah. This is this is just this is so tough. And I mean, at this point, you can understand what Gimmicks says. He says, hypothetically, if I just keep turtling, 
Zora can't really attack into me. I've won games like this, honestly. As Terran. I have won games like this as Terran. Uh, but the difference between those games and this game is I'll normally have around 20 Orbital Command Centers. Yeah. Gimmicks doesn't. He's got four, which is a start, but it's, it's, he needs a lot more, especially if these Ultras and Banelands keep trading. And honestly, trading is good for Sleep at this point because he can remax on units that are a lot more effective. He's going to have the Ultras just roll in here. Good cutting for gimmicks, but again, the upgrades is really starting to take its toll because of the lack of damage output. The fungals latch onto the remainder of the bio. Ultra is now working as a production line, and gimmicks going to lose the remainder of his units and send into game three. GG. GG. Sleep now showing a lot of his strengths. Before, it was kind of, you know, that two base unit took a long time to get rolling, but when it did, it, it packed quite a wallop. Yes, it did. I mean, I can't believe Mutas were were alive for that long. Yeah. <laughs> Not they only all that. They all had 7 to 10 kills. They all, had, all of them had 7 to 10 <laughs> yeah, kills. All of them. The, the <laughs> effectiveness of those mutas were insane. <laughs> uh, so that being said, I, what, there were 10 mutas out there? That's yeah. at least... That's at least 70 kills right now. Uh, no, at least 73 at least, maybe kills. Maybe even up to 100, depending on the maybe, scale. <laughs> but at least 73, right? Because you saw one with That's seven, right. one with 10. One with that eight, it's at least outlier. 74. My Andre, goodness. you can't focus on the one piece of data. Just like Teja, you can't focus on <laughs> one person that ruins all the data. Exactly. And nothing Any, about that, though. Anyway, we're going to head to a short commercial break. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, game number three between these two players, of course, Sleep and Gimmicks. Don't go anywhere. More NA selection after this.